Welcome to another edition of Brugler's Draft Board. Dane, let's take another look at another draft scenario here for the Jets. And it's possible that three-fourths of the big four tackles actually might be off the board when the Jets are on the clock. And let's say the Jets want to go receiver here. Who do you like for Sam Darnold and the Jets? I think there might be a faction of the fan base that be a little upset with no left tackle at their, uh, right there at a number 11. But throw on some of the the highlights of these receivers. And I think they, you know, you're, you'll be okay. Uh, and Jerry Judy, especially just really stands out. It'd be a fun fit with, uh, with the jets. What stands out most about Judy, the break and balance skills, uh, that start stop athleticism. It really allows him to uncover as a route runner and he can tie up defenders and knots. It, it's something that really helps him separate. And that's, that's for a quarterback. That's what you're, that's what you want at the position. Uh, it doesn't have ideal bulk on his body. Uh, he's going to have more drops than you want to see, so he's not the perfect prospect, but uh, he could teach a master's class in terms of shifting his gear, setting up defenders, uh, making transitions look very clean and effortless. So he's a very quarterback-friendly player, and I think something that would pay immediate dividends for, for Sam Darnold. And that route running ability, that allows him to step in and, and make uh, an immediate impact. And the biggest thing might be just improving his releases, getting better versus press, uh, just being matching the physicality of the NFL corners. And that's something that'll be a little bit of an adjustment. But if you're drafting Jerry Judy at number 11 overall, I think you're expecting him to come out as a rookie and, you know, have 60 catches, 800 yards, uh, you know, seven touchdowns, come out and make an immediate impact. So you and I had talked about it in an earlier segment that the second round tackle options are somewhat thin. So let's say the Jets go receiver in round one at 11 and then actually look to the defensive side of the ball, particularly at edge rusher or cornerback. Which of those two positions do you think is a better fit in round two? Yeah, let's look at edge. You know, I think that if you're a good edge rusher, you're not going to last very long. And so uh, let's keep it at Tuscaloosa with Alabama and based just on talent, Terrell Lewis. Top 20 talent in this class, 6'5", uh, 262 pounds, over 34 inch arms, uh, explosive. Uh, he's got the body flexibility. He can bend the corner. He can use that length. He can create movement at contact. Uh, but the reason why he'd be available in the second round and not the first round, it comes back to the durability concerns. Uh, his redshirt uh, freshman year, sophomore year, elbow injury, then torn ACL. Uh, but he was mostly healthy this past year as a redshirt junior in 2019. Uh, 11 and a half tackles for loss, six sacks. So this is going to be a medical pick. Uh, if the team doctors sign off, then he'd be a great addition to the depth chart. Somebody who can give the Jets that that juice off the edge, disrupt the passer. Uh, and I think the time away because of the injuries, uh, you know, stunted his development a little bit. But he's a guy that has not yet played his best football. He has a lot of good football ahead of him if he stays healthy. So as long as the Jets feel like. Uh, you know, the durability stuff is in the past and he will stay healthy at the next level, then, you know, he's a guy that will step in from day one, maybe be a nickel rusher, uh, push for a starting job some point during his rookie season and, you know, be a guy that outplays his draft position. So let's say the Jets address edge in round two and then at pick 68, their first in the third round, one of two, they actually go with a cornerback. Who do you think could be on the board there and would be a good fit for the Jets? Let's keep it in the state of Alabama. Uh, Auburn, uh, Noah Igbenogany, which is just a fun last name to say. Uh, he's he's a guy that uh, came to Auburn as a receiver, moved to corner. He hadn't played defense since middle school. So a little bit of an adjustment the last two years, but he's a big time athlete. And those types of guys always stand out. And for a former receiver, really tough, really uh, you know hard-nosed player. He likes to mix it up with receivers uh, and, and attach himself at the hip and not let go. You know, not the biggest guy, but he has the speed, he has the tenacity, uh, needs to work on his mechanics a little bit. You know, understandably, he moved the corner two years ago. So there's a little bit of some uh, some seasoning there that he's lacking. But um, he's a guy that is a better athlete than refined cover player right now. But the speed, the competitive nature, you're going to bet on those traits as a guy that can step in and, and play some type of role as a rookie. But then by year two, you're expecting him to fight for starting reps. Okay, and then let's wrap things up here. Let's finally address the tackle spot. Of course, Joe Douglas is going to make the offensive line a priority. We saw that in free agency. And in the third round, are we talking about somebody that's plug and play, or is it a more developmental prospect? Yeah, more the latter. Uh, more a guy that you want to develop at the position. One guy that could be left uh, in the third round who is still a quality player is Matt Parrott. 
uh, from UConn who played both left tackle and right tackle. He was a four-year starter for them. Uh, you know, he's a guy that's extremely long, over 36 and a half inch arms. Uh, he has enough foot quickness. Uh, you want to see him be a little bit more mean, uh, a little more competitive when the pass rusher really gets in his face. You want to see him match that tenacity that he, uh, the pass rusher is throwing at him. And he can do it. He just needs to do it more consistently. So the remarkable length, uh, the foot quickness, uh, I think that he's more of a developmental guy uh, than someone that's polished and ready to see NFL snaps right now. But you see the intangibles, you see the raw traits. Uh, that's the type of guy you want to bet on uh, in the third round, someone that could be a starter for you down the road. There you have it, another edition of Brugler's Draft Board. The draft really inching closer right around the corner here, Dane. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next week. All right, thanks, Ethan. Thanks, Ethan.